Welcome back to my channel. This is V3ZAG. Today we are diving into Kwangsheng UVK6 modification, enhancing it to receive all bands, including HF frequencies below 18 MHz. Our upgrade utilizes the SI4732 module housed in a flexible film type PCB. Let's begin by dismantling the radio step by step. First, remove the oleum knob. Since the SME connector nut is mounted on the inner chassis, we don't need to detach it. Next, remove the battery. The metal laminated chassis can be easily slid out using a screwdriver. Carefully pull it out, ensuring that the speaker wires connected from the front panel to the main board on the chassis are not strained. Now we need to remove the FM receiver IC, these two SMD components, the small SMD capacitor and finally an inductor located beneath the LCD display. The SI4732 module will be installed in place of these components as part of the recommended modification. I will employ a few tricks to dismantle these SMD components since I don't have access to SMD rework station. I'll be using normal soldering iron with a pointer tip and a sieving needle for desoldering. After desoldering the FM IC, I used soldering wax type flux to clear the solder. Next, I'll proceed with the other SMD components one by one. Oops. That ended up being a mess. Well, I'll replace the SMD capacitor and the inductor lastly after installing the module as I want to conduct some checks. So let's install the modules now that the mess is cleaned up. Here's the module which will be placed like this. If your hands are shaky, you can use double sided tape to fix your PCB on the main board. Since it's a film type PCB, take care to avoid overheating, which would damage the PCB tracks. I'll start by soldering the dip pins of the PCB first, followed by other contact points. Next, I'll be soldering the ground contact point to the main PCB. To solder the RST contact point, I'll be using this small piece of wire to connect the RST contact point of the module to the upper end of this small SMD resistor. This small piece of wire came along the kit. Everything seems fine now. Well, let's add some additional solder to the dip pin pad because I am not entirely satisfied with the soldering. And there might be an open contact. Looks good now. And it gives me hope that the radio will work correctly the first time I turn it on. We are almost finished with soldering the module. We have just this last contact point left to solder. It's time to solder the final contact point from the module to the main board. I'll be using a small piece of wire for that. Now let's proceed to the SMD inductors located beneath the LCD display. We need to replace this SMD inductor with the provided chalk from the kit. Carefully remove the LCD display and underneath you will find this small SMD inductor. Remove it carefully and replace it with the provided twin lead chalk. 
pair solder one end of the chalk to the SME center pin and the other end to the chassis as shown. Be mindful of any screw holes. Bend the leads of the chalk to ensure they don't touch the screw. That's it. Let's put the LED screen back in place. Meanwhile, I changed my mind and replaced this small SMD capacitor with the provided one in the kit. Before I put everything back, let me check if the radio turns on or not. Well, all seems good. Let's do one final cleanup with PCB cleaner and my kids paintbrush. Then assemble everything back together hoping there's nothing left over this time. Carefully slide the laminated chassis back into the front panel like this. Press the bottom part of the chassis until it locks with a clicking sound. Check if the keys are functional, if everything is working properly. Reinstall the volume knob and check if the radio turns on. If you noticed, I am currently using IJV firmware which won't support the radio after this module surgery. I need to flash the CEC firmware onto the radio to make it functional. I will be using my homemade programming cable for this process. For more details, refer my previous video. You can download the latest firmware version 0.51HF from the official git page. I will share the link in the description. I will be using Extremer's UV tool to flash the firmware onto the radio. To enter firmware upload mode on UV K6, turn the radio off and then on again while holding the PTT button. If the LED remains on, your radio is ready to flash. Next. Specify the path of the newly downloaded firmware, select the correct COM port for the programming cable and click on flash firmware button to begin the flashing process. If successful, the radio will automatically turn on with the new firmware. If not, the display will remain off and you can attempt to reprogram the firmware. If you are lucky enough, it will get successful. As you can see, the radio was successfully flashed and turned on with the new firmware. To access the HF reception mode, long press the zero button on the radio to bring up a new menu where you can select HF and LF bands. There might be a chances that you might see a wait message on the display screen. The only option available for you will be to turn off the radio as the keys will be non-functional. If you encounter such situation, the first thing you need to check is the soldering continuity at the 8 pin IC legs that we soldered. I have some knowledge of the settings but it will take some time for me to fully understand all the menus and options. There are plenty of settings available for band selection, BFO adjustment, bandwidth and attenuation, which is quite exciting. Due to bad weather causing my HF antenna to fall, I will be using VHF dipole antenna to touch the HF reception. It may sound crazy. Let's see how effective it is on the VHF antenna.
you might have noticed that the volume of SSB audio is very low. This is a drawback of this version 1 module and that's the exact reason why a new version module was released. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching 73s.